Okay, I've got a partially completed electronics enclosure here, and in this video I'm going to finish the design of this and then make a larger variant of it using the family of assemblies function. So, first thing we'll have to finish the base here, so I'll select it and in place activate it. And what I have here is a, uh, a couple of connectors, and I need to create an embossed feature that they're going to sit on. And you see I've already got a sketch started here. Now I'm going to use multi-bodying to create, or multi-body modeling to create this feature. So I'll add a body, and you see that even though we're in a sheet metal document, I can add a part body, which means I can take advantage of part modeling to create it. So in this case, I'll select that sketch and make a 55 millimeter extrusion. Now, if we look over here in the left, you see that that's created uh, a new design body. And I can actually hide or show either of those two. They're separate design bodies within the same file. We can also click on one of these and do something like show body features and it shows the features in my tree which belong to that particular body. I'm going to right click on this and just move it to a construction body. What this means is that it behaves exactly the same way but this particular body won't show up in higher level assemblies or in drawings. It's just a construction body. And that's fine for my purposes, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click back on my sheet metal body to activate it and use the emboss command to select that feature, or rather select my sheet metal first, and then select that feature I created to create an embossed uh, feature. And you can look at it here, you see it's created all the rounds for me, and now I've got somewhere for those connectors to sit. Now the other thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use a boolean command to create cutouts for those. Um, these are already in the correct position, we just want to make some cutouts for them, so I'll select the sheet metal part and then go around and select any of the components that intersect it and it'll actually make cutouts with those intersection points. So when I complete that and hide that previous level you see that I now have cutouts that will fit these perfectly. Okay, I'm going to create a slot on this tab, and to do that I'll just jump into the ordered environment. Remember in Solid Edge we have access to both synchronous and ordered modeling, and up until now everything I've done has been history free. In this case I want to use a sketch driven feature, and the way a slot works is you basically just have to draw a straight line. Now I'll go and constrain that line so that it's locked on the center point of this tab, and then just throw in a couple of dimensions make that 15 millimeters by and then maybe 10 mil from the edge and then the slot command is going to take that single line and put a slot create a slot with it and that's all defined here in these options you can dictate a width um, how the slot ends and in a part you can actually have a counterboard or raised or recessed hole of course in a sheet metal component this is typically be cut with a laser cutter so we just want to cut all the way through all right, I'll select that feature and just mirror it in the center reference planes to put it on the other side. Oops, I want to grab that plane. And there it is there, and hit finish. Okay, and we jump back up a level into the assembly. Uh, the one thing you notice about these two connectors is that they've got this little uh, icon next to them, this blue icon, and that just means they're grounded. They're kind of frozen in space. But now, because we have mounting holes for them, I want to create some assembly relationship between these components and the holes that we cut in the sheet metal part. And what that means is that if ever we move the sheet metal part or those bosses, uh, these components are going to come along with it because of the assembly relationships. Now, the easiest way to do that is with a command called assembly relationship assistant. This basically lets you pick the parts you want to create a relationship between, in this case those two parts, and the sheet metal feature. And then you define the type of relationships you want to create. Once that's done, Solid Edge will automatically go and find relationships that maintain those parts where they are relative to the pieces you selected. If I hit escape and finish that, when we go back and look at those parts, you'll see the assembly relationships collect there. All right. Next thing I'm going to create is a cover for this part. Now, the create and place command has had some nice updates in Solid Edge ST6. You see we have this new option to position the origin of the new part by graphic input. And what that means is it puts the origin of the part 
on your cursor. And you'll notice as you kind of come over and mouse over other features, it'll kind of snap to key points on them. And we can use a key point filter here to select a precise positioning for this origin. In this case, I kind of want it on the center back edge of this part here. I can also dictate the material for it and with this button here selected, the create in place, it means that once I accept these parameters and give the file a new name, it'll take me right into this part and I can start creating it. Now in this case, I'm going to make this using ordered modeling. And I'll create a tab on this center plane. I'm also going to design this part to be symmetric, so I'll only worry about one side of it for now. And I'll do a rectangle by two points. If in Solid Edge, if you want to create a relationship between a sketch and a piece of uh, the assembly that's outside of your part, just make sure that you go into Tools and you turn on Peer Locate. And what that's going to let you do is let you create relationships. For example, a connect relationship between the edge of this sketch and the outer edge of that part. Now I know that it's a perfect alignment. I'll add my thickness. And when I do, I notice over here that um, I didn't actually position this part correctly. I positioned it right on the upper edge of the uh, enclosure, but we've actually got these tabs which kind of come up a bit. So I'm just going to go up a level into the assembly and just move the whole thing up. And the easiest way to do that is to just select the part and then position the steering wheel on that leading edge. And then as you move it up and down, you can grab a key point on that feature. Now sometimes it's a little hard to see because the part will block so if you hit Control shift d what that does is that hides the dynamic preview and allows you to accurately select that point. And if we look now you see that it's resting exactly where I need to be on top of that tab. So let's go back in and finish the design by adding a flange. Remember that when you add a flange you can choose where the material is relative to the profile or the edge you pick. So if I've got all my material on the inside, you see that it interferes with it. Whereas if I go material and bend outside, I've now got a gap between my other part and the new flange. What I want to choose is the mat just the material outside because that will draw it up tight. And I'll just reach down and use a key point to define the distance of that flange. Now, when you're designing a symmetric part, it's nice to be able to see what it's going to look like on the other side. Um, of course, at some point we're going to mirror this, but because we're in ordered modeling, we won't do that mirror until we have all of our features. So a good new tool that's been introduced is this reflective plane. And basically, we'll set which plane is our reflective plane and then turn that on and that'll give you a live preview of what it'll look like once you mirror it in that plane. So this is a very handy way to kind of make sure that things are going to fit before you go and commit to making all the other features and then mirroring it as the very last step. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go in here and create a contour flange on this back edge. When you create a contour flange in ordered modeling, you want to make sure that you connect to the edge of the part. So I went and hid that... Um, reference plane or reference uh, point just so that I know when I draw that sketch that it's tied to that leading edge of my part. And let's make that I don't know half an inch. And of course we can extend that flange across this edge and because it's a contour flange I can even select multiple edges and it'll wrap around with corner treatment there. So that's a nice feature. Now let's take a look at our reflection plane and that looks pretty good so I'll go ahead and mirror that whole body and I want to bring back up my coordinate system because I'll use that plane as a reflection alright looks pretty good so if we go up a level we've got a nice cover created for this part I'm going to go ahead and save it because now is the time when we want to create a larger variant of this part. And, and this new variant is basically going to be wider and accommodate two of these equipment racks or two pairs of them. It's also going to use a different variant of these equipment racks that are longer uh, in the uh, Y direction here. So the family of assemblies command is right here in this tab and I'm going to create a new member. I can give these names, in this case I'll just stick with member 1 and member 2. 
And because it's a family of assemblies, uh, it goes and removes any links I have, because of course we now have two driving assemblies, member one and member two. I'm going to work in member two, and because it's going to be wider, I'm going to need a new cover and a new base. Now the easiest way to do that is to use a command called replace part and we have this replace part with copy what that'll do is it'll make a complete copy of this but in a unique part so I'll call this enclosure 2 and I'll do the same thing with the cover replace part with copy and call that cover 2 so if we take a look in our pathfinder you see I have cover 2 at the bottom here and if I switch back to member one, although it looks identical right now, it's back to cover one. That means I can go ahead and modify the base and the cover um, in my second variant to make them wider. Now I'm going to go into the cover first, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to drive this whole assembly by changing just the base. I just want the cover to go along for the ride. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, some of these features to synchronous. And the reason I do that is because with some of these features in th synchronous, or at least the first couple that define the basic size of it, I can use the create interpart relationship command, which is a nice fast way to create um, a driving relationships between two components. Basically, you select the two components, and Solid Edge will automatically find all the geometric conditions that exist between the two. And when you hit save, it'll save those so that it retains those, pos those relationships. What that means is I can go in and modify the size of this part and it will drive the cover. So let's go and make those modifications. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to make this wider in this direction. So I'll just put a box around all the material I want to move. I'll select a driving dimension. I could place a brand new one, but I've already got one that shows my outer edge to edge dimension. And that's the one I want to change. I want to make this, let's say, 550 millimeters wide. So that will extend the width of this and bring along these features that are highlighted in blue with that change. Alright, let's do the same thing now looking at the top of this because we actually need to make this wider in this direction. You see I've already got a dimension here. I'm just going to put a box around this, these components here and anything on the back edge. I want to move them both symmetrically so I'll select both sides and then select this dimension and make sure that I'm modifying it in both directions so that middle thing is selected and just make that 500 and well maybe not that much let's say 460 millimeters wide that should be enough to accommodate the new racks that I'm gonna put in if it's not of course I can go back and change it so back up a level into the assembly you see that I've got a much wider enclosure. If we turn on that cover, you'll also see that that adjusted to accommodate the new size. And that's just because of those driving relationships I created fairly quickly with the create interpart relationship. I'm just going to also ground that. Okay. Now, looking on the inside, we need to swap out uh, the smaller racks with larger ones. So I'm going to use the replace part command and this particular component is a family of parts meaning that it'll automatically show me another member uh, this is the 100 millimeter slot it's offering me the 150 one so I'll accept that and you see it puts in a larger um, component here. I'll do the same thing over on the right hand side this particular piece is not a family of assemblies or, or a family of parts rather uh, it's actually a mirror of this. So if I select it, you see we get the 150 millimeter variant. Now it becomes apparent that my um, supports are in the wrong spot. So I'm just going to grab them here and move my steering wheel over this mounting hole and then initiate a move that will line it up with that mounting hole. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay. That looks nice. Now we're going to need two sets of these racks, so I'm going to grab all these guys over here and just move them over a bit. And I'll just position them kind of roughly here for now. I'll use an assembly relationship to accurately position them. Now before I do that, I want to make sure that these all move as one unit. So I'll just quickly create a rigid set command. And what that does is that 
ensures that when you're creating new relationships, these always move together. So if we click on any of these parts, you see that they now have a rigid set command. And that's nice when you don't necessarily know what relationships are, are acting between these. You just want them all to move as a part. Now, I've moved this over to this side. I want to actually center this whole uh, group of components. I want to center it within this uh, right-hand side of my enclosure. So to do that, I'm going to use, I'm going to turn on the base reference plane so I can see the center point, and I'm going to use the center plane command. And this is a really nice assembly relationship. Basically, the way it works is you pick faces or two faces on one of your components and then two other faces in this case the center plane of my part and this far edge and that's going to center these components in there so I know that that's been accurately positioned now maybe what I want to do is create another set of these so again I'll just grab them all like I did before only this time I'll turn on the copy and what that'll do is that'll create a new instance of all these parts over on this side. This is a nice fast way of replicating uh, an assembly structure, uh, especially when it's asymmetric. And in this case it will be because I need clearance for this plug over here, so I'm just going to use the steering wheel and snug up this edge to this piece right here. And I've positioned this exactly where I want it to be. Okay, a couple of little uh, final tweaks to this. Remember that by going in and changing your select to face priority, you can actually pick up faces within uh, a part. So you see that I've grabbed these, without leaving the assembly, I've grabbed these holes within the sheet metal component. And I can go over here and adjust my dimension to make a change right to that part without leaving the assembly. This is a nice fast way to make changes on the fly. This works, that's, those are synchronous components here, but this works just as well for ordered components. If I click on this slot, which you remember I created uh, as an ordered component, I can turn on the dynamic edit command and access the sketch that drives this right away and make whatever changes I need to this. Alright, so let's go ahead and save that. And we'll take a look that, remember, this is a family of assemblies, meaning that within one assembly file, I have two variants of the same product. So I'm right now in member two. If I jump over to member one, there it is there. If you turn, hide the cover for a second, you'll see that's a single rack, and it's the smaller 100 millimeter racks. And then if we jump over to member two, we have the bigger version, two sets of 150 millimeter racks, and of course a cover to match.